Hi guys, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. Um, in this video I'm going to talk to you about buying and selling antiques and collectibles at auction houses. Now, no matter where you are in the world or what part of the country you're in, um, if you're in the UK, you'll have local auction houses that do general sales and you'll have your bigger auction houses that do your fine art and the the top end antiques then um, you know the likes of Celebes, Christie's and a few of those so there's good points and there's bad points um, I'm going to go over some of the good and bad points and then at the end of the video then I'm going to go through some what I consider to be hot tips for you or very important tips um, one to make sure you stay on track and two to help you make a bit more money um, out of the auction <coughs> so there is not a huge amount of good points in comparison to the uh, negatives um, in my opinion however one of the um, good points is you can buy items cheap auction houses tend to without slagging the auction houses off, they tend to look after themselves. They put an estimate on there that's almost going to guarantee the sale. Um, and then if they achieve a higher price, then it's great for you. But if they don't, they still got a sale. They're not happy with high estimates and high reserves. They like it to be a come and buy me estimate with a low reserve, which is all great for them, guarantees their money, but it doesn't guarantee the best sale for you. So you, as the seller you're rolling the dice. So again that'll be something I'll cover here towards the end of the video I'll show you the best way to get the best value in the auction estimate because the auction estimates do count uh, for buyers. Now <coughs> excuse me you have to forgive me I have a bit of a cold. <coughs> Now one of the biggest um, good points I can think of for an auction house is you have access to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items, sometimes as many as 2,000 items over a two day sale, all in one location. So you don't have to go out digging for it, you don't, you don't have to know nothing. Um, you just go to the one spot, it's all described and catalogued for you and you just decide how much you want to pay for it and then it's just pot luck whether you buy it. So the best part of an auction is the sheer volume of stock they have. Um, they have so many different, if it's a general sale, they cover absolutely everything, porcelain, glass, ceramics, uh, metalware, jewellery, they'll cover it all art. So no matter what section you specialise in or if you're a general dealer like myself, um, you'll find stuff to buy. Um, and the best thing about auction houses as opposed to car boot sales or auctions well I'd say auction houses there are some auction houses that you can the vendor or is the seller can put their own descriptions on it but the key point is 90% of the auctions out there will filter out the fake so there's a lot of um, fake silver, gold, antiques on the market um, and a good auction house will know what these are and they won't even let them through the door. So you do have an element of safety with an auction house. Um, if you're buying at a car boot sale or an antique fair, you just buy a beware, you're using your own knowledge, you're handling the item um, and it's down to you. I'll give you a good example. Um, the White Friars com Glass Company um, been originally started as Powell and uh, Powell um, became white rise now and in the 60s they done a vase uh, called a drunken bricklayer and it's basically a series of squares that go up across up and back so it's sort of like that and it's classed as the drunken bricklayer now this fakes of these everywhere but I've never seen a fake go through an auction house so there are the good points. Um, there's also the negatives. Um, 
Now, as I've already said, an auction house will, as a good point, oh, sorry, as a bad point for them, they will, um, as a good point for them, sorry, they will um, value the items low, which is a bad point for us, good point for them. Okay, um, bad points. As I've already said, um, a bad point um, for us, or a good point for the auction house was auction uh, auctioneers tend to put very low estimates on it to guarantee the sale of the items. Now, that can also have a reverse effect, as in it's a bad, bad point for us to buy from auction because if there's something that's well known or very desirable, if they have internet bidding and they've catalogued it right, the estimate they put on it don't matter. It is going to achieve its full value. So then, the only way you're going to buy it from an auction house is, plain and simply, if you're willing to pay more than the next man. Um, and with the internet bidding now, uh, the online um, book bidding and commission bidding and everything else, the likelihood is, if it's catalogued right and it's described accurately it's going to achieve its money. Auction houses they don't tend to make a lot of mistakes they've had a lot of stock in they've handled it all they've seen it and they do have a nasty uh, thing of devaluing things and putting uh, I'll give you an example um, I've sold Archibald Knox um, Liberty Bomb Vars um, in an auction house in Cardiff and he put in a box of miscellaneous so in that sense they will make mistakes but as a rule if it's described right if you're a dealer you got no hope um, if you're a collector great but if you want to sell it on the likelihood is you're going to be stuck with it for a year to achieve enough money to cover your costs your cost of the item and make a small profit you can be stuck with the item for a year so that's the biggest negative I can see for auction houses. Um, as I say, people that go to auction houses um, don't even have to have the knowledge base behind them that, let's say for argument's sake, if you go out to an antique fair and it's all for yourself. I can go up to an 18th century drinking glass in a box of Victorian glasses and I can pick out the one glass that's 18th century for the two or three pound and I know I got a decent glass. In an auction house, that auctioneer will have already described it as an 18th century drinking glass. So anybody can go there and buy it and know exactly what it is. So they don't need the knowledge. That's why they end up paying more in auctions. But they get the stuff. Um, another negative, I suppose, for the auction house is it's almost two days out of your week. You have the first day if you want to attend the view day. Um, now I recommend if you're going to buy in auctions, you go to the view day because they have a viewing before the auction for a couple of hours on the day, but they're that busy, that full, you cannot handle stuff, you, you're queuing up to look at the stuff. If you go to the, the viewing a day or two before, you'll have hours and hours to scour the catalogue, scour the stock and see if there's anything there that takes you fancy. Um, but I suppose the next biggest complaint I would have um, for buying at auction is you set the price for your item might be hundred pound but you're not paying hundred pound for it it's closer to hundred and twenty five by the time you put your buyers premium of anything up to twenty twenty two percent um, very rare you find a company under fifteen percent for buyers premium then on top of that you've got your bat so <clears throat> it knocks the prices right up and as you've seen from some of my um, <coughs> car boot sale finds, I like to buy my stock in cheap enough that I can sell it on cheap. Therefore, I'm not stuck with it. Um, so then we'll come to what I call my tips. Um, one tip for selling at auction. Um, know what you got. Do the research yourself. 
don't rely on the auctioneer to value it for you. There's a website called uh, The Sale Room, um, or The Price Guide. Um, it's online, uh, it's not expensive, it's about £6 a month. You type in your item and it gives you all the results through all the auction houses. It actually records auction houses results. You can then see the, the top, the bottom and work out the average. And what I tended to do when I was selling in the auction house is I'd print the top five off. And I'd go into the auction house with my item and with the uh, top five printouts and I would show the auctioneer I'd say that's what I got. These are the prices they've achieved at auction, showing more than enough examples of them selling. Um, recent sales are better if you can prove them. Um, and then the auctioneer then would put a higher estimate on it and a higher reserve, which is great for you, as opposed to going in and just letting the auctioneer say oh, 40 to 60, 30 to 50. You get the value of the item. And why is that important? Because as I've already said, People who attend auction houses, yes, you've got your experts that go there, but you'll also have your people who haven't got the knowledge base behind them to value the antiques or to describe the antiques and rely heavily on the auctioneer's description and estimates. So if you've got a better estimate and they like the item, you can still sell it. And you sell it for more money. Um, now, the biggest tip I can give you if you're a seller at auctions, pay no attention to the selling fees. Everything is negotiable. I've sold in your local sale rooms and I've sold in Sotheby's and Christie's and I can promise you they do trade rates. With these are rates that regular sellers or trade sellers go to them um, because they're continually selling. Um, you have negotiated rates. Now I used to pay 10% in my local sale room in Cardiff. I used to travel to Donington uh, for Druid Neat. They'd give me a reduced rate. I went to Sotheby's and Christie's. Again, you get reduced rates. With Sotheby's and Christie's, you tend to have to be dealing in higher end items to get the discount. They don't just offer it to anybody, um, but you can negotiate discounts. Now, if you're dealing in, I don't know, leaks and the stuff they want, if they want your items, they'll give you a better price. Um, so negotiate with them. They're flexible, they they do do trade rates. Um, and as I say, if you've got something of value at that, or something that they want, they will certainly give you a better rate. But if you want to do it, your local, your local auction house, just go in, there's so many auction houses around you, you talk to the auctioneer and you say, I want trade rates, and they'll probably knock the 5% off. And believe it or not, over a year, you can be saving thousands. Um, one way of uh, making money um, when you're buying out of the auction house is look for the job lots or the miscellaneous boxes. Now, I always take the job lots uh, or miscellaneous boxes, as you say. Um, it may be two items in there I want. Those two items then, might, the job lot might cost me £30. It doesn't matter what those two items are worth, I'll take those two out of there. Then I'll take all the broken brass and broken copper and any broken silver or gold or anything that's in the lot, if it's jewellery or whatever, and all that gets hoarded. Um, I, 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 I hoard my scrap, copper, brass, silver, gold, it doesn't matter, I hoard it all. Then everything else gets wrapped up, I take it to a car boot sale, and that then will pull the £30 back for the whatever I've scrapped and the couple of pieces I wanted for online selling. That's a very good way of getting around the um, auctioneer's descriptions because he will not put a description, a big long description on a job lot. It is simply job lot of miscellaneous. Job lot of glass, job lot of jewellery, job lot of coins. They won't go in to describe them all. So then you're in with a shout. The time you're in trouble is when they've got one item and they put a big description on it and a big estimate. So you've got to do that. You can leave book bids. Now, some auctioneers go in straight away. I, I actually know a couple of auctioneers that have started quite high on the book bids. But as a rule, 99 out of 100 are honest and start low and work their way up. 
So book bidding is a good way. You can go to the viewing if it doesn't interfere with uh, anything else. Do your viewing. Leave your book bids with the auctioneer. Come away and you haven't got to attend the sale. That's good for a number of reasons. One, you set your price. You can't get auction fever. Auction fever is a nightmare. You can want something so bad, you have tunnel vision and you just keep waving that paddle, you don't care, until you realize at the end when you're paying the bill, Christ, I paid 200 pounds for that and it's only worth 150. Trust me, happens. Another reason why um, leaving book bids is really good is plain and simple. <coughs> While everybody's attending the auction, the local auction, because 90% of the dealers will be there, you can be at the car boot sale or the antique fair buying, because a lot of the auctions are held on Saturday morning and things. Um, I know Chadwick's up in Hereford is a big one um, that a lot of the dealers from Cardiff go to, and it's perfect. It's uh, on a Saturday morning, uh, once a month, and frees up Cardiff wonderfully for me. I always know when the auction's on. I don't always attend the auction. I know when the auction's on up there because I buy better in Cardiff. Um, again, best times to attend the auction houses. Um, summertime, you'll find more dealers on the car boots and on the antique fairs than in an auction room. This is because there's so many public out selling um, they don't want to be stuck in a room full of 50 or 60 people paying top money for antiques when they can be out finding them in amongst the public. Again, if it's serious weather warnings or snow, people don't venture out at all. Um, I've been to auction houses where there's been five or six buyers in the snow and they still have to run the sales. So, certainly something worth looking at. When you're um, going to your viewings, um, make sure you inspect the lots. Um, don't bid on anything you haven't um, inspected. Um, study the uh, auctioneer's catalogue and guide. Um, look for condition reports and things like that. Once you've done your browse around, go outside, have a cup of tea, look at the catalogue, go back in, look at the items. Don't bid on anything blind. Trust me when I say that, um, I've been in an auction room and they've held someone up and I've gone, Christ, how the hell did I miss that? So I bought it and then realised afterwards I didn't miss it and I chose to ignore it because of the state of it. I can't tell you how important it is to, um, if you don't have it marked down and valued on your book, don't bid on it. It's not worth it. Um... If it's your first time going to the auction house, you're going to have to take identification with you and register, so make sure you leave plenty of time to allow that. Um, obviously, if there's a queue, you don't want to be missing the start of the auction, or if you want to do a little extra view and double-check one or two of the items you've seen and you've gone home and done research on, because you've got two hours before the auction starts to view. Um, so leave yourself plenty of time. Um, if you're going to attend the auction, it's a long, long day. You want to wear suitable clothing and comfortable clothing. So in the summer, you want to wear cool clothes. In the winter, you want to wear warm clothes and vice versa. But whatever you do, make sure they're comfortable and they're suitable. Um, as well as that, you want to be taking food, you want to be taking drinks, a uh, flask of tea and so forth, uh, so that you can pop out to the car and have a cup burn and something to eat. Make sure anything you buy fits in the car. Don't um, don't be silly. I've seen me buy pieces. Um, you know they've been at the end of the sale and there's been nobody left in the auction room. They've gone. Who'll buy this chest of drawers for a fiver or a couple of pounds? And I got put my hand up because it's just for nothing. And then you got the trouble of trying to get it on. And I could be two or three hours away at an auction house. Um, tying things to the roof of the car with ropes or straps, driving home, not even a roof rack, just because I can't hold my hand down. Um, so make sure anything you buy fits in the uh, in the car. Take boxes with you to um, pack pieces up as well. 
um, if you buy a job lot of uh, items um, then they're not always going to have packing so you want to take a box to store and you want to take bubble wrap this is covered more in the video I've done earlier on tools or things to take with you when you go buying um, I discussed you with you why you need to take with you and why and it's very similar items to take to an auction as to a car boot sell so I hope you found this um, video interesting um, your final tip I suppose would be relax don't um, don't worry about you know scratching your nose and things. The auctioneer ain't gonna take that as a bid. Uh, he will have already made eye contact with uh, all the bidders. He'll know who's bidding, who's not. Um, so don't be afraid of just relaxing and scratching and whatever you need to. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, the film. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you did, feel free to subscribe. Um, you'll find us on eBay Antiques Arena clearance. You'll find us on Facebook, Antiques Arena, and we have a website, antiquesarena.co.uk. Thanks for watching, guys.